Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much for this powerful meeting. Thank you, Lord, for the servants that you've raised up to carry forth the word of faith throughout the world. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to stand before your people. I pray that anointing not only be upon me, but them, that everyone that hears this message will be challenged and changed by the powerful word of God. I pray the anointing be upon me in these lips of clay that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking you to think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word shall come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and that signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the word preached. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Can you shout amen? somebody. Take a seat. Take a seat, please. Flo, I know you're talking about Flo. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I heard it first over here. No, I heard it over there. <laughs> Woo. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you. Well, listen, we're not going to let anything dampen our spirit because he said in everything, give thanks. And we're going to give thanks today in Jesus name. I'm going to put this right down here. Amen. All right. Well, did you come for the word this afternoon? I flew in just a few minutes ago to bring you the word too. Amen. All right, let's open our Bibles, please, and let's go over to Flo. Okay, all right, who said that? Right over here, come, come in, come in. You said it right over here. So you have to say it at the right time. If you don't say it at the right time, you don't, you don't, you don't get any, any results. But it's, your timing's gotta be right. Plus, there's a voice of faith that I heard that yeah. said Flo. Amen. Is there, wasn't that somebody over here? I guess it, okay. No, I, I'm not talking about over there. I'm talking about over here. Amen. Glory to God. It was a man's voice. Amen. All right, well, I'll, uh, I'll just hold, fire, hold fast. Praise God. All right. That's all, he's coming, okay. All right, let's open our Bibles, please, while he's coming. Let's open our Bibles to... Um, Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Is he coming? Uh, did I see somebody coming? Okay. Okay. All right. We, we're going we gonna to practice social discipline. <laughs> Social distancing didn't separate him from that $100 bill, did it? <laughs> All right, Isaiah in chapter 51. Um, now, <clears throat> he says here, starting at verse one, hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock of which you are hewed and the hold of the pit which you are digged. Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found there in thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Come on down to verse 16. I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens. Say plant the heavens. And lay the foundation of the earth and say to Zion, thou art my people. Let's go over now to Matthew's gospel chapter 15, please. Matthew chapter 15. 
All right, Matthew chapter 15. I'm going to start reading here at verse 12. Then came his disciples, and they said unto him, Knoweth thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. All right, let's go to Isaiah and chapter 55, please. And then we're going to um, Ephesians and then we'll be out. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, by the way, is a very powerful uh, chapter if you've ever kind of studied that. And let's start reading at verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give tea to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Let's go all the way over to Ephesians, please. In Ephesians, in chapter 5. Ephesians, chapter 5. Okay. Over in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Somebody have an iPad or something like that. Yes, sir. Yeah, you got one. You got one. All right. Um, you got a microphone over here that I can use here. Praise God. He's going to get me one right quick. I want to see the amplified. Oh, on that scripture. I guess they can put it up there. Praise God. But I want you to read it. Okay. Just a minute. This, I want you to catch this. Because if you will, read that scripture in the amplified translation. Therefore, be imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example as well-beloved children. Imitate their father. All right. Read it again. Therefore, be imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. Amen. Read it the third time. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. Can I get it one more time? Come yes, sir. On. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him. Follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. Here's a little something for your help. Thank you. Now, it pays to have the word of God. Now, interestingly enough, as he read that, he got more demonstrative. Yes. I'm talking about imitating God. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Imitate God. You start thinking about God and the nature of God and so forth and so on, and that he's telling you, Paul is saying, imitate God. Your father. Copy his example. Isn't that powerful? So you and I have, this is not a suggestion. This is a mandate. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to act like God. 
So as we look at this, I want to start here and I'm going to roll right through this. We're going to take a little break in the middle and we're going to receive an offering and then we'll go right back into it. But we're going to call this becoming fruitful. Becoming fruitful. My wife, um, right on the back patio of the house, she has grown some tomatoes. And uh, she, uh, she, she has learned for the last three years, I think it is, how better to grow those tomatoes. In other words, when she first grew them, I don't think she even got a crop. I'm just, just personal. I'm, I'm trusting she's not listening. But I, I don't think she even got a crop. <clears throat> but now she's doing things. She's perfecting her planting. And she is now planting and she starts with a little twig and she's taking the soil and she's, you know, perfecting the soil by taking um, eggshells, crushing those, putting them in the soil, put some other things in the soil and so forth. Um, and then she planted them and and now this thing is starting to grow. And I said, wow, that's something. Now I want you to go to John chapter 15, if you will. Over in John's gospel chapter 15, because it seems like most of what Jesus taught, he used the examples of nature to communicate what he was teaching about. And he says here in John chapter 15, I'll say starting at verse one, he says, I am the true vine, my father's a husband, and every branch in me that beareth fruit, he taketh away. Every branch, every branch in me uh, that, uh, that beareth no fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean. Just a minute, let me get my papers straight here. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Say much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Come on down to verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Glory to God. All right. Becoming fruitful. So she now starts growing this plant. So it's got all these branches on it. I said, man, you know, it looks full, looks green, so forth. And so now some little buds come out on some of the branches. But those buds that come out in those branches are really the places where a tomato is going to grow. The other branches, she clips them away. I said, whoa, 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 you, you, you stripping your plant there. She said, no, no, no. Those branches, if I don't clip them, they will soak up all the energy. They will try to soak up all the food source. They will soak up the nutrients so that my tomatoes 
either won't grow or won't grow full. And I'm telling you, she said, the only place those tomatoes are going to grow is where you see this little bitty bud. I said, oh my goodness. Now, if you see that plant now, she had to put a stick in the soil because she had to help support the one, the branches that were left because the tomatoes that grew on them got so full and, and ripe until they would bend the branches. The branches couldn't even support the weight of the fruit. But notice what she had to do to get there. She had to clip away some parts that were designed to take up energy, take up life forces and not produce a thing. So I'm saying one, God wants you to bring forth fruit. Secondly, if you do, then the vine dresser is going to start clipping and he's going to start clipping away everything in your life that's taking away from your purpose, from the cause that you were put in this earth. Why? So that you could bring forth more fruit. So I think meetings like this are where seeds are sown and where you go back and God's going to start clipping away because he's giving you some extra nutrients so that you could bring forth whatever he's purpose for you in this life. And he might clip away some of those uh, unwanted relatives. No, I, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. But he might clip away some of the things that you might be doing that are a waste of time. It's just using up your energy. And, and God has a purpose for you here and that purpose he wants fulfilled. He never desired for any of his children to be barren. Everybody is designed to be fruitful. So that kind of taught me something about it. I was maybe come back on Thursday and show you a picture of how it looks at one stage and how it looked at another stage and how it looks now. It almost looks scrawny or something. I mean, I don't see all these, these nice green things and I see one or two twigs and three, but they are heavy with tomatoes. So a lot of things we might be doing are not only a waste of our time, but something God didn't even intend for us to do. Isn't that just like the devil to eat up your time or eat up your energy and you have nothing to show for it? Say, be fruitful. fruitful. All right, let's go back to that. Let's go to John, uh, Genesis chapter one, please. Now this is where, this is where God's first spoke it. Now I call these four foundation laws of creation. All right, you can see it here and you can see in the beginning and in the beginning God created verse one, the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Notice nothing was happening. And God said, now something is about to happen. Are you saying imitate him now? Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, so forth and so on. So notice how he got light. How did he get it? Spoken. Where did light come from? Came from where? It came from inside of God. So notice what was inside of him, he spoke outside. 
And here's the Holy Spirit waiting for the word. So he's there to move, to manifest the word, but he doesn't manifest anything until it is spoken. God speaks by faith. Because right out there in the circumstances was darkness. But what did God call darkness? What did he call darkness? Come on, say it loud. He called it light. And what happened? Like what? Now, didn't he say imitate him? I'm, I'm just, I, we read it several times here. All right. Now, if you go on down here, God created and made things. Okay. And he made some things out of other things. Like he called a fish out of soil. God decided what he wanted and then spoke to what he wanted it to come from. I'll try it again. God decided what he wanted and then spoke to what he wanted it to come from. One more time. God decided what he wanted and then spoke to what he wanted it to come from. He spoke to the fish, to the uh, waters and got the fish. He spoke to the soil and got the cattle. Now, whatever he spoke to and it came from, they have to stay attached to. If I take the fish out of the water, the fish will die. If I take the cattle from the soil or some things from the soil, the cattle will die. My point to you is when it was time for you, he spoke to himself. And if you separate from your source, what will happen? Will die. Adam and Eve, the day that you eat of this and disobey me, you will be disconnected and you shall surely die. Isn't that good? So I'm saying to you, that's why we got to get everybody reconnected because a lot of people are dead men walking. So what we've got to do is get them reconnected before they leave this earth. Evangelism is extremely important. That's part of fruitfulness for a ministry. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> let's go down to verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Dominion, to rule it, to reign over it. It implies stewardship. Dominion even implies ownership. Now I put some definitions down here. I looked it up in the Webster 1828 dictionary. You might want to get that. They even have an app for it now so you can download it. But it's a dictionary and that Webster takes that and uses scripture to define words. And so he said here, this word dominion, what does it mean? Sovereign or supreme authority, sovereign or supreme authority. What does sovereign mean? It means nobody is bigger. It means the top. It's, it's the extent, it's the highest sovereign or supreme authority. Dominion, the power of governing or controlling, the power of governing or controlling. Adam, I'm giving you the power of governing or controlling. Let's say that gets to the New Testament over in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. He says um, that whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Didn't he say that? Another translation, CEV, whatsoever things you forbid or whatsoever things you allow, God will allow. Dominion. The right to, the right to possess and use without being accountable. The right to possess and use without being accountable. Dominion. One more. Dominion. Power to direct, control, 
use and dispose of at your pleasure. The power to direct, control, use, and dispose of at your pleasure. Uh, you two disciples, I want you to go in town. You'll see a donkey tied up there on time and bring him to me. If somebody asks you, what are you doing with my donkey? Tell him the Lord has need of him and he'll let him go. Dominion. Whatever you need in this earth to get your job done, you got a right to it. Dominion. Let them have dominion. I like what we were talking about ownership a few years ago. And, um, Brother Copeland and I were talking, he said he had uh, ownership with stewardship responsibilities. What is stewardship? Stewardship says, uh, I've got to make sure that what I am responsible for is done or comes to pass. And if you look at Psalm 82, this is a good picture of stewardship. And verse one, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty and judgeth among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked, Selah? Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations uh, out of the earth are out of course. I have said you are gods and all of you are children of the most high, but you shall die like men. In other words, if you don't know who you are, you're going to die like a natural man. You should never, ever allow any thought from this day to come into your mind that you are only human. You should reject every thought that you are only human. Now, once you're born again, you have just moved into another category. I said, once you're born again, you have just moved into a whole nother category. You have just become unstoppable. You have just become invincible. Hallelujah. You cannot be touched. Hallelujah. Say amen to this. Amen. Now, what, 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 what's, what's happening here? Why, why aren't we walking like this? Let's go back over again to Matthew chapter 15. And over in Matthew's gospel chapter 15, he said this, and I'll start reading here again. I'll get to it sometime, praise God. He says here in 15, starts reading at verse 13. But he answered that every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be what? Rooted up. Rooted up. So there are plants that God didn't plant or trees that God didn't plant. And a tree produces after its own kind. So now when we go back over to Genesis, but let me, let me just talk about this a minute. So I've got in me a belief system. I believe something. What do I believe? I believe before I got born again that my parents raised me up and slept me in a bed that we were paying Sears and Roebuck 
for. It was a good thing. I had a bed to sleep, comfortable. We were making revolving charge account payments. Are you with me? And I had some clothes on that we were still paying on. Boy, if, if they would have repossessed, well, let me, let me, I don't want to go there, but <laughs> okay. But and the only time I'm saying we had a car, paying on, had a mortgage, paying on. Nope. That I found after I got saved was a tree. See? You see, if you, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, okay, I, maybe I should back up. Can y'all take what I'm about to preach here? <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I just want you to hear what I'm saying here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and look at verse 33. Either make the tree good or it's fruit good or else make the tree corrupt as fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Now let's just stop right there. Because all this Jesus is teaching now, because he's got a bunch of disciples here that he's got to get some trees in them out. Because they're bringing forth fruit that are not righteous. They're bringing forth fruit that perhaps may not line up with the kinds of fruit that Jesus wants them to bear. Now, can y'all take what I'm about to say here? Cause I'm going to show you up before you get out of here. All right. But this, this is important here because how many other things in our lives? I mean, just it, you name it. Now, I'm only saying this because once you get born again, you come into the kingdom. Jesus said in John 3, 3, that you must be born what? Again. If you look at the Amplified, it says born from above. Okay. Now, once I'm born from above, Philippians Chapter three, verse 20, he talks about the fact that we are now citizens of the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the commonwealth of God. We amplify, we are citizens. See what I'm born from above. I'm a new nature now. I'm, I'm no law. I'm going to reject the fact that I'm only human. I'm rejecting that Amen. from now on, from now on and I'm born from above. That means I'm born out of God. And now I'm in the earth and I'm born as a citizen, a citizen of another government. The government is called the government of the kingdom of God. Say amen to that. And I'm in that government, which has priority in my life. And so now me being in that government, that, 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 um, uh, government, and being a citizen in that government, I'm a citizen before I'm a member. Amen. See, once I get born again, I'm a citizen. Now, as a citizen in anything, you've got a constitution. As a citizen in any country, you've got some rights. So this Bible spells out what our rights are and it serves as our constitution of the government that we belong to. Now, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And what will the truth do? It'll make you free of all the trees that were planted in you by the government that you and I were born from, which was a kingdom of darkness. And we were now in the kingdom of your dear son. Now, every tree and belief system that the enemy planted in our lives to hold us in bondage to that government have now got to be rooted up. That's 
So if I'm a member, I may be a member of a church and I'm a member of a certain church, whatever that church is, doesn't make any difference. But I'm a citizen first. Say it, say amen to that. Amen. I'm a citizen before. See, once I get born again, the next thing God does is he, by the agency of the Holy Spirit, directs me to a ministry that I say, hey, boy, this feels like home here. Yes. You got what I'm saying? Yes. And it's not just a member on somebody's role. It means first Corinthians 12, he said, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Amen. See, because both of them are members. Amen. So when he talks about members, he talks about the useful parts of that local church to get his job done that he's got for that particular church. Say amen to that. So I got to come to the concept first that I'm just not a member because a member makes me sit. Uh, it, it makes me come every Sunday, sit, hear the word, so forth and so on. But if I'm a kingdom citizen, then I understand that there is a, 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 Keep Shandalabahoya. There is a responsibility that I have to expand the kingdom. See, I, I just can't sit. And and I'm a I'm a say say citizen first. I'm a citizen first. See, I'm 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 a citizen before I'm black. Now, now just don't, don't, don't get mad at me, nobody, because I ain't got time for it. Listen, when you go to a nation, look what it says in Jeremiah in chapter 29. I think that's where it is. And Jeremiah chapter 29 <clears throat> and now understand what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting up some trees. Look at verse seven and seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away. Now I'll stop right there. In other words, whatever nation I plant you in, bring peace yes, to that nation. See, I'm not supposed to hate my nation. I have a responsibility to better my nation, to take my nation and help it meet its budget. If I'm sent to a company, I have a responsibility to use my fruitfulness to help prosper my company. Are y'all with me here? Now I have the ability to do this. God wouldn't call you to do something that you didn't have the ability to do. So all of this is citizenship. See, if I'm, I'm, if I'm just, if I'm just a member or if I'm just a black man. Now, if, if as a African American, I had only knowledge of my lineage as an African American, suppose they threw me in the furnace like they did the three Hebrews. What would happen to me as a black man? I'll come over here. What would happen to me as a black man? 
I would burn to a crisp. But if I'm a citizen, you see, a citizen is an ambassador. Second Corinthians chapter 520. You are ambassadors for Christ. And as an ambassador, I have diplomatic immunity. I'm going to go to this side over here now. God would not drop you off in a world and say, go for yourself. He said, lo, I am with you. Not only that, Luke chapter 17, verse 21 said, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. I have diplomat, listen, a diplomat, they can't even arrest him. Say amen. Amen. A diplomat normally has gates around his what? Property. Property. What do you call a property? Embassy. 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 And that diplomat, that that gate around there is usually with armed guards. Why? Because that property is not considered New York property or Chicago property. It's considered the property of the land he came from. He says it like this in Psalm 105, touch not my anointed and do my, come on, prophets no harm. Now I'm only saying this because that citizenship, songs, sermons, things that we said, they have not given much to this idea that I'm in another government. And so that image has not been in here and God cannot move any further than you can see. He, he hit what? <laughs> Glory to God. The, the Im- how you see yourself, Glory to God, has everything to do with what you can do. Come on, everything to do with how far you can go or what you can receive, how you see yourself. How do you think David saw himself facing Goliath? This is what he said. This day will the Lord deliver you. Notice you and God are a majority. See, all you got to do is write down what I'm saying. I'm giving you seeds. I'm all, all you got to do is just come in contact with what I just said. That right there, if you get that, you got it made. See, I knew who I was when they said, uh, Pastor Winston, they're not going to let a black man buy this shopping mall. This, this whole area is prejudiced. They've redlined it, so forth and so on. I say, who are you talking to? Uh-oh. See, they were looking at the outside, but I, my days of being human are over. Now you need to do that. See, Gideon tried to work that on God. God, uh, uh, I'm the poorest in the tribe. I'm, I'm, I'm least in my father's house. I'm the, I'm the most illiterate and so forth. God said, quit all that talk. He said, I'm going to get you and have you to set Israel free as one man. Now I'm just saying to you, see, you can shut down the power of God from moving through you by confessing something God didn't say about you. As an ambassador, My limitation is I cannot say anything that my country didn't tell me to say. I can't say. If I do that consistently, more than likely as an ambassador, I will be recalled. 
because I'm speaking something my country didn't say. My limit of what I can say is in this book. Say amen to that. Is this making some sense to you? The devil had worked some stuff on us and then had the nerve to call the church non-essential. Is it the right group I'm talking to? I got the right group, okay. No, no. That's why I've been teaching this, this kingdom thing for years. Got books on it. Because I knew what, what we were missing. There are things you cannot do. There are places you cannot go. There are things you cannot receive without a kingdom mindset. Yes, sir. And what you're doing is you get new seed today. I'm, I'm, I'm a digging up that old tree. Say amen to that. And at the same time, we're cutting off some of these worthless parts so that you can grow full and strong and talk like God. Man. <laughs> Well, I'm about to preach myself happy up here. Glory to God, man. Woo! Hey! No, no, no. Wherever he assigns you, the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, Romans chapter 14, but in righteousness, peace, and joy. In the Holy Ghost. Jesus started preaching the kingdom. Mark chapter one, verse 11, uh, verse 14. He came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Saying, the, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Why? Because the kingdom of God is coming with a understanding that is almost directly opposite than the way we've learned things. Then on his getting out of here, it says in Acts chapter one and verse three, that after Jesus was raised from the dead, he spent 40 days with the people teaching them on the kingdom of God. Let me show you something else. Look at the last chapter of the book of Acts. Is this the right group I'm talking to? Last chapter of the book of Acts. Now, everybody has their part, and part of my part is to teach you on this subject, the kingdom. But look what he says here, starting at verse um, Acts chapter 28. Let's see, where have I got here? 27. All right, 28 and verse, that's Romans. Where's 28? Okay, here. Verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own house and received all that came unto him, preaching the what? The kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man could stop him. You are unstoppable. They even had, had a chamber or city council meeting and voted that I couldn't have services in that whole mall, 33 acre complex. Guess how long that last? Because in the kingdom, you can change laws. See, the first thing, before you can transform your environments, you're going to have to be transformed. You, you can't transform something that you're conformed to. You have to be transformed. What you have to do is get the word, stand on it long enough for it to change you, and then you change your environment. So, 
I had to sleep in a bed that was, you know, and wear some clothes that, you know, thank God they didn't come get the things that, that we were paying on. Say amen to that. Amen. And that's the way I live, see? And what you can't do is in any place, there's no condemnation. So you can't listen to me and get condemned because now faith won't work. Okay. And so what happened? I started coming to ministries like this and heard about people buying stuff debt free. Debt free. I can buy a shirt debt free, but <laughs> wait a minute. Now understand, this is foreign to me because I got some trees in me that the master didn't plant. So what do I have to do? I have to go in this book and get some new seed. Glory to God. I have to go in this book and get some new seed. Let's come back to Genesis, please. Is this the right group I'm talking to? It says here in Genesis chapter one, verse nine, Verse 29, 29, pardon me. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you, it shall be meat or provision. So how does God change us? Seed. He gives us seed. And over in Luke chapter 8 and verse 11, the seed is the word of God. How does God change us? He changed us with seed time and harvest. And the seed is the word of God. Every one of us comes into the kingdom with ungodly thought patterns. That's the only way you could make it in the world. You had to think like the world. Now I know some people say, well, I was always saved. Yeah, okay. But my point to you is most, most of us had to be changed with your perfect self. Okay? Most of us had to be changed. But I'm just saying, what happened to me? Is I had to come and find out something. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. I'm thinking wrong. I always had this thing that if God will do it for him, he'll do it for me. Now, where did I get that from? I, I didn't just think of that out of the sky. I got that from Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Peter stood up. He had a marvelous discovery. He said, I perceive God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and work his righteousness has the same access to his blessing. I got the same access that the blessing upon Brother Copeland and Sister Copeland, Bill Winston has access, come on, help me, help me now, to the same blessing. White folk, black folk, same blessing. I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help, I'm trying to help somebody, see. I'm trying to tell you the problem's not outside. Come on, help me somebody. The problem is inside. The image has been wrong. So I got to fix it and stop blaming somebody else. Thank God I understand that some things were done, injustice was done, but I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. You couldn't stop me if you wanted to. 
Boy, B.W. is preaching here today. Every time I look at it, I look, see somebody jerk. Oh. I know, I know that thing hits you there. Oh, thank you. Ow. You know how y'all do. <laughs> ah! Now, what am I saying? I'm saying have some fun while you're growing. God wants you to have joy. See, when you know you're going to win, <laughs> he always causes me to triumph. Second Kings chapter two, verse four. I'm not saying some things were not done right and so forth, but what you need to do first is get saved. And all of a sudden the script gets flipped that now you no longer are human. And your attitude and your demonstration should cause other people to want to get what you've got. Are are y'all with me here? Because I was brought up in the South. I was brought in there. You couldn't go in certain places, you know, colored only, and you could go around the back so far. I've been been there. I've been there. But I believe... A lot of times, people, I've been not getting into this. Uh, Preach it. Preach it. <laughs> can, can, I, can I just go off just a minute here? What time? What time is it? Y'all got me going. Y'all, y'all got me going out there. Well, I don't know where you plan to go. That, that's not in my notes. I, I could say this. I could say this. See, you, you got to watch again, you know, look, look like you even sounding political or anything like that because people waiting on that, you know. I told you. <laughs> and, and they don't even know what you are. They just, they just you know, uh, I'm a kingdom citizen first. Let's say it like that. Okay. Yeah. Amen. All right. So, no, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, right. Uh, well, uh, I was brought up in a place where you had people like George Washington Carver. Dr. Carver, Dr. Carver, Dr. Carver, he took a peanut in, in a laboratory that was, I mean, when I was a kid in elementary school, they would take us every year to the Carver Foundation to look at everything he used so forth. This stuff was antiquated. There was nothing, there was nothing modern. There was nothing. He, he, he made over 300 products out of peanut. He made a hundred, over 115 products out of a sweet potato. Everything, face cream, so forth and so on. See, he, he, he did that. Now I saw Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington had this, this, this uh, objective. He took ex-slaves as students and he was gonna turn out students with indispensable skills that would have undeniable value. Mm, yes. And he did. Yes, sir. And he did, turned out millionaires. <laughs> now, now, what did he do? He pointed to who they really are. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? I grew up in a place where our parents were Tuskegee Airmen. And that's why all of us learned to fly. Yeah. I'm saying when the image in, is inside of you, you'll bear the fruit. So I never saw myself as inferior. I was just another color. And so I'm just saying in here, can I get back to the subject now? Now I'm only saying that because I saw all of that. I didn't see people being held back. I, you know, they were making their own way. They were having gifts and talents and so forth. And that's the same thing God's going to do with you. Yes, sir. 
As a matter of fact, let, let's just go to that right quick. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. Glory to God. Are y'all with me here? Okay, in Proverbs chapter 17, glory to God. Uh, can I, uh, Proverbs chapter 17, I, I want to show you something. Okay. Can I just say a couple of things? Because I got to take a break here because they got to come in and we're going to receive an offering here. But let, let, me just, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Over in Matthew's gospel, what did I tell you? Proverbs 17? Let's just look at that. Let's look at that first. Proverbs 17, verse 8. A gift is a precious stone in the eyes of them that has it. And whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. So you've got a gift in you. Call it seed. And in every one of us, God's responsibility toward mankind is to give you seed. I'll say that again. God's responsibility for mankind is to give you seed. Okay. So he gave you a gift and you can treat it as a seed. Now you have to develop that gift. The Holy Spirit works with you, of course, but it doesn't work without you. You've got to develop that gift. And as you develop that gift, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, a man's gift will what? Make room for him. And what will it do? Bring him before great men. Bring him before great men. I didn't know that preacher gift was in me. I didn't know the gift was in me to be a pastor. I didn't know I was out there running and playing football and, and, and whatever else, you know, we did as kids and so forth. I didn't know that. I grew up in high school, grew up in, in college, went and flew fighters for the military and went to IBM in one day. I wanted to be saved. Because things were going bad for me, I just transitioned out of Air Force into IBM. I was in training and I came back and they gave me a certain territory that, that they gave me. I thought they were going to give me a medical territory because I finished school over here in, in, uh, in pre-med and chemistry and I finished school in that. I thought they were going to give me that, but I came back and they gave me a territory and said, Bill, we have a new territory for you. I said, what is that territory? They said, non-profits. I said, wait a minute, listen to what you just said. Non-profits. I said, how am I supposed to make some money with a bunch of people that don't believe in profit? How do I do that? So what did I do? The tree inside of me, they're prejudiced. They don't like black people. Blah, 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 blah. But then I got saved. I cried out, God, something's wrong. I need you, Lord. You said, Lord, whoever believes in you, you'll help them. The next four days, a lady came by my place and said, hey, Bill, you want to go with me tonight? I said, yeah. She took me. I thought we was going to get down. You know what I'm saying? But instead of that, we got up and began to praise God. And the next thing you know, I got born again. But when I got born again, the scales fell from my eyes. I got born again in the kingdom of God. Now I could see things I couldn't see. Now I can go places I couldn't go. I took that area of association. I turned that thing around to the point I was making more money than anybody in the office. I'm telling you, I went from no man to top of the ladder in sales. And I'm saying God won't just do it for BW, whoever. He is no respecter of persons. Say amen to that. 
I'm listening to Charles Katz and Kenneth Copeland and Gloria Copeland and Fred Price and Kenneth Hagen. I'm listening to that, getting all that inside of me. I'm getting new fruit. I'm getting new trees inside of me. All of a sudden, I heard a man named Charles Cap said, I put all my debts on the table. I backed off of them, and I said, debts, I'm talking to you. I said, wait a minute. If he'll do it for Charles Capps, he'll do it for B.W. Uh, today, everything's paid. Watch this. And I'll never borrow another dime. Now, how can I say that? Not trying to impress somebody. I'm speaking out of a new revelation that I got of my covenant, come on, that my God shall supply, come on, all my need and I'm supposed to be the lender. Come on, come on. The lender and not the borrower. I'm supposed to be the head. I'm supposed to be above only. Now give God praise on that. Come on, Doc. I'm here to tell you right now what he did for BW. What he did for Brother Copeland, Sister Copeland, what he did for Dr. Proud, he'll do it for you. I'm telling you, these people planted new seeds. New trees grew up. Trees are your belief system. And he had to grow up new trees in me concerning a marriage because I came, my mother and father divorced and all that fighting and so forth. So here I got a woman named Veronica. She's just the kindest, just the sweetest thing. You can, can, mm, and just sweet. (laughs) But about six months after I married, I said, something said, you done married the wrong woman. I said, Lord have mercy. How can I get out of this one? I went to a faith meeting, got a little book by Ed Dufresne called Praying God's Word. Got that book, began to read it about my wife because I didn't need to read nothing about me. I'm okay. It's just my wife needs some correction. <clears throat> my wife is a virtuous woman. She always does me good as long as there's life within her. The bread of idleness, gossip, discontent, and self-pity. She does not eat. She gets early, gets up early and gets spiritual food for the house. She assigns her maids their task. She does not court neglect of her kingdom duties by assuming others. She opens her mouth with skillful and godly wisdom. In her tongue is a law of kindness. She gives counsel and instruction. The word is working mightily in our marriage. We've been transformed into the image of Jesus by the renewing of our mind. I closed the book and the devil said, that ain't true. Yes, it is true. Every word that I just shared with you comes out of the word of God. I'm saying this is new trees. We put new trees in here. And today I got a marriage made in heaven. Now give God a praise. Let's take a quick break and I'll be right back. Praise God. Ha ha on the devil. We got him where we want him now. Glory to God. Take your seats for just a minute. Let me just give you a word. (laughs) Glory to God. Y'all got me preaching, boy, y'all. This group came down here hungry, boy, (laughs) y'all. Man. Bible says God pours water on ground that's thirsty. Isaiah 44, verse 3. All right. Over in 2 Kings... This is a woman, and the Bible says, it says in 2 Kings chapter 4, and it says here, verse 8, and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem where was a great woman, woman had means, 
And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her, her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passed by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The Bible says, she said, I perceive, I perceive. The Bible talks about the word discernment. It's found over in 1 Corinthians and chapter 2. And here's what he says, verse 14. But the natural man, unsaved, unspiritual, receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness, Foolishness to him. Neither can he know them. Because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Look it up sometimes to distinguish. She, discernment stuff can't be taught. It's got to be caught. Her husband didn't catch it. He's probably as carnal as a goat. But he didn't catch it. And so here she caught this. That this man is a holy man and he's coming by here. Now, wait a minute. If he's a prophet, he that giveth water to a prophet can receive a prophet's reward. That means whatever you need. Well, she made a prophet's quarters. That was called seed. And once she did that, took her money, took her time, made comfortable for him. He laid in the bed. The moment he did, God got him up to ask her, what does she want? Jesus teaches it like this. No man that has left house, mother, father, sister, brother, for my sake in the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold. For every seed, harvest is guaranteed. And so what happened? He said, ask her, what does she want? What does she need? Does she need me to speak to the king to her for whatever? She said, no, tell him I'm okay. He said, the servant of the prophet said this. She had no child, master, and her husband is old. And when she, he said that, I, she had no child, her husband is old, meaning to me, probably her husband has past ability to have children and she has been barren. Now God's got work to do and he's going to do it off of that seed. He said, tell her this, next year, this time, she'll have a child. Thank God. Now I can see her now going in there telling Joe, hey, Joe. <laughs> he said, no, don't believe that. But something happened. Well, glory. Soldiers begin to march. And people, and people, watch this. She got pregnant and had that child in one year. I'm talking about you give to a prophet and you are going to have a prophet's reward. 
Yes, sir. I'm saying whatever you have need of. Peter sold his boat because he needed his business to flourish. Didn't, I'm going to say, he didn't have any money, but he could let Jesus use the boat. Look what Jesus did to the boat. What did he do with that boat? He ran it over. They, they watch this, change the economy of the whole coastline. Yes, sir. You ready to change the economy of your coastline? Yeah. This is powerful stuff I'm preaching. But well, watch this. You can't learn it. You got to discern it. Many times people sow and their harvest comes right past them while they're looking the other way. The devil's got them distracted and they, their car, the devil driving it right back. Mm-hmm. No, you can't sow and not get a harvest. Amen. Here's what Galatians 6, 7 says, be not deceived. Come on, help me. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man, that shall he also reap. Give God praise and prepare your offering, would you? Discern it now. Do what he tells you to do. And watch, this meeting is going to be a turnaround for you. I said, I'm speaking now. This meeting is going to be a turnaround for you. This meeting is going to be a turnaround for you. Come on, this meeting, you, you can even sow it for your auntie who may have come down with something. Let's sow it for a, turn, a miracle, a turnaround. Come on. All right. Let's continue now. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, all right, I'm I'm coming. All right, now, let's go back and look at, we're teaching on this subject of becoming fruitful. Let's go back to Genesis, Genesis chapter one. (laughs) Genesis chapter one. All right, look at verse 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now with this gift God has for you, he bless them. Bless means to empower the prosper. It means an empowerment for success. So you and I have gifts, but so do other people. God never intended for us to compete. He said, dominate. So in Acts chapter one, And verse eight, he's talking about this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And he says, but you shall receive power. The word is dunamis or miracle working abilities. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. David says something over here in Psalm chapter 144. 
and verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my God. Glory to God. My strength, pardon me, which teetheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Now notice what he's counting on. He's counting on the blessing or the anointing to empower him to do what humans can't do. And when the Holy Ghost came on you, that empowerment came on you for your gift. He said over in Daniel chapter one, verse 20, that the three Hebrews found in every situation to be 10 times better than people of the world. I want you to look at Psalm. I read this before here, but look at Psalm chapter 72 and verse 18. Bless be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And look up the word wondrous or do a study on it. He has done great things, but he will do things such as none else can match. That's what's on you. Nobody else can match it. You know, they have different kinds of technology. One is just evolutionary technology and they have uh, uh, incremental technology and they have um, disruptive technology. Disruptive technology is like Martin Luther King. When he came in with that, that was innovative by the way. And he came in with it nonviolent and he's going to change the laws through nonviolence. Well, there was, there was, there was wisdom in that. If you look over here in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said in Ecclesiastes here in verse nine, he says in verse 16, no, pardon me, in verse 18, wisdom is better than weapons of war. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. They interviewed um, his, one of his, the men that with him, Andrew Young, who was, uh, rose to be a governor of Atlanta and also um, a ambassador for the United States. And they interviewed him. And it's what he said. <clears throat> he said, Martin said, we are going to change the laws without killing anybody. And you can get wisdom here and make things change without anybody dying. So I'm saying whatever gift you have, it doesn't make any difference what gift that is. Watch this. By faith, begin to act on that gift. Watch this and watch the anointing take over. Watch that anointing take over. That anointing is not something, it's everything. It's everything. That's why in 2 Corinthians, he said uh, about that anointing, he said um, that uh, for the love of Christ constrains me. What does that mean? Christ is another word for what? Anointed one in his anointing. See, for the love of that anointing, it constrains me. In other words, where I would go off on somebody. I think about, I'm going to hurt my anointing. You got what I'm saying here? So I'm only saying that because here, like I showed you, that wisdom has children. <clears throat> and these children are ideas. 
their ideas. So the ideas come from God as a seed and produce children. And so what you want to do is you want to get the ideas from God, what God has to do, because everything God has to do is going to bring heaven to earth. And Jesus said, pray this way, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is where? The earth was designed to be a copy of heaven. And God is not done with it. And that's why you were birthed into this earth. That wherever you go, you're going to use the blessing to turn ruined places into gardens of Eden. Watch this. And no terrain is too rugged for you to bring forth in this earth. All right, let's go through the three, the four laws now. Foundational laws of creativity, of creation, pardon me. First one is to be fruitful. What does that mean? It means to bring forth. It means to produce. It means to create. To create. The Bible talks about, because some people think sometimes, I don't know why, but sometimes they think that they get too old to create. Well, let's look at two scriptures. Let's look at Psalms, Psalms chapter 92. And look at verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Just do your little study when you go back home or whatever, study palm tree and see how many products have come from a palm tree. That's how much potential your gift has. That's how much potential you have in this earth. Look at the next part of that verse. Come on down to verse 14. They shall uh, still bring forth fruit. Come on, help me. In old age. Now you see why Adam said to God over in Genesis 15 and verse 3, how is this going to happen to me I have no seed. Whew. God is responsible for you having seed. Amen. You couldn't bring forth anything if you don't have any seed. So God must be responsible for giving you an idea. Didn't he give Joseph a dream? Can I get an amen on that? Was it a small dream? God dreams big. And this is why a lot of people don't receive it. He's bringing forth something through you that he has to be involved with for it to happen. He has taken away all that would say, I did this. No, it's impossible for you to do without God. So I'm saying to you, this seed is planted in soil. Now, where is the soil? It's in our hearts. Mark. Chapter four. How are we doing? Doing okay? Hey. See, the enemy knows you have this kind of value. You are extremely, as a matter of fact, you are designed to be unforgettable. Look what he says here in Mark chapter four. Verse 14, 
the sower soweth the word. Isn't it something how he gives all these descriptions of the types of soil, but he doesn't say anything else about the seed. Because the seed, according to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, is incorruptible. It's perfect. Man, so farmers can't do that. They have to work a crop year after year to get the best seeds. They, they, they take the seeds, they sow them, they get a harvest. They take the harvest, take the best seeds from it, and they store those. Some of the others that you may use them for other things. But each time they're trying to perfect better harvest. God is already perfected. This book has your seed. I'm telling you right now, some of y'all better start sleeping with a pad and pencil by the bed. You see, we're in, we're in wealth transfer time. And one of the ways you're going to get it is by ideas. Let's go to verse 20, 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of, of God, as if a man would cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, the seed should spring and grow up. He doesn't know how. Glory to God. First, and should sleep and rise and grow up, he doesn't know how. He should sleep and rise and grow up, he doesn't know how. First, um, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First, the blade, and then the ear, and after that, the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the what has come, the harvest has come. Now, be fruitful means to produce, create, or bring forth. Multiply means to increase in number or increase in your development. Multiply. Replenish has to do with resupply or renew or to to re, um, replenish, re, restock. And the word subdue means to keep it under or control the market. Now this is very key because everybody that is functioning over the world is follow, are following these same principles. Right. Apple, iPhone 2, iPhone 3, iPhone 4, iPhone 5. Now people are lined up waiting on iPhone 6. And each time covering more market, taking more market share, each time improving the product and so forth. He's talking, that's the same way you're going to do the way they're successful is they're following these principles. And I'm just saying that you've got to see yourself relevant and of value that God needs that gifting inside of you. He needs you to do this. Why? Because you're going to replenish the earth. We, right now, Look at some of the bad laws that are on the earth. Look at some of the things that are on the earth that are against God. I'm just saying, when you come in, you're going to make it so that this earth is going to be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. Folks, the church is not going to be taken up out of here owing back rent. 
forget that. Forget it. You're going to be a glorious church. So I'm saying with these things here, this is what he wants. So here I, when I was going to RU, God was really dealing with me about scripture. And I, in, in, you know, found this scripture in Isaiah and this scripture talked in Isaiah 48. I am the Lord, thy redeemer, the Holy one of Israel that teaches thee to profit and lead thee by the way that thou should go. I said, whoa, I thought the church was nonprofit. God said to me, there's no such thing. He said, even the man who I gave five talents to, he came back with five more. The man I gave two talents to, he came back with two more. The man I gave one talent to came back with the one talent and I fired him. Because there's no such thing as nonprofit. So what happened? I took that verse and began to meditate it meditation, the missing link many times in the church. They just hear a sermon one time and they're out. That is not, this is seed I'm giving you. This stuff's got to be planted. And the other speakers as well. And so next thing you know, God, it's, it's, uh, I took that seed, planted it. Watch this. It began to grow. Next thing it began to grow and I began to get a revelation idea of starting something called the Joseph Business School. Then I got two people in the ministry. I was led to them. One of them degrees from Harvard and University of Chicago and MBA. I said, hey, you all got good degrees from from the the system. I said, come here. I want you to help me start business school. Oh, okay. I said, now um, you go away, do work, just do some study, come back and tell me how long it's going to take to start. They said, okay. They went back, came back, and take one to two years, Pastor. I said, okay, let me go pray. I went and prayed. God said, tell them it's going to take two months. I said, all right, sure will. Take two months. In the kingdom, you don't increase by time. You increase by truth. And and when you have this truth on you, you'll be surprised what time will do. It'll disappear. So I'm just saying, did that? They came back in two months. What happened? Once they took the prophet's word and began to act on that word like you act on the word of God that he'll give you, all of a sudden doors open up. Somebody says, hey, I got a complete package that I wrote for a program over here. You can have that if you'd like. Took that, so forth and so on. People came from everywhere. People to teach the class, so forth and so on. Right now, the class is in five continents. And we're about to start some new things with it. I'm not bragging on me. I'm saying be fruitful. This is every one of us. All this word you've been getting, it's designed to water. It's designed to give you seed. Come on, it's designed to give increase. Say amen to that. Can I keep going here? So what I do, I was preaching. Man from Africa came. He's preaching on a Wednesday night. He backed off the pulpit. Dr. Winston, your airplane is in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and went back to preaching. Well, I had enough sense to know what seed is. The seed is the word of God. Say amen. amen. That I'm saying because you have been born from heaven, you're going to reject every thought of you being human. Amen. You're going to act just like God. Yes, and for God to get light, he called it, didn't he? Yes. And he already had it inside and spoke it out. Yes. And I'm saying when he gives you seed, you have soil already inside, ready for seed. And I'm saying you get that seed and plant that seed in that soil and it got in my soil and start coming up first to blade. 
That means that something outside is going to quicken and or going to be a reminder that something inside of you is growing. I'm getting pregnant with the Word of God. And I'm saying, as this thing starts growing up inside of me, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. And then when that whole thing has taken place, we put in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now understand the harvest has come, but it's not manifested yet. I got to manifest it by taking a step of faith. So I come down to a meeting like this and God said to me, why don't you sow a seed? I said, well, I sowed the word. He said, no, we're bringing forth the harvest now. We're putting in the sickle. So the man of God here needed an airplane and God told my wife and I, sow into it. We sowed into it and don't you know, I'm telling you within a short time, airplane manifested. Now, I'm not talking about airplanes. I'm not talking about houses. I'm not talking about just that. I'm talking about anything that God would have you to do. Just get yourself some seed for it. Say amen to that. And sow that seed and that's where the process begins. Is this the right group I'm talking about? Now, the last thing, what time is it? I got seven, I got seven minutes. All right. All right, let's talk about something. Grace knowledge. Grace knowledge. I've got to get my thoughts from somewhere else. If I want to defeat and not compete, then I've got to get a higher thought. And where am I going to get it from? The Word of God. God's going to give me a thought that I think a lot of times a human can't think. Now look what he says. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 55. Say planting the heavens. Now are you, are you, are you hearing? Are you hearing that? I mean, I'm, I'm saying that whatever I need, whether I need transportation for the thing, whether I need a building, so forth, I needed, uh, God said, I want you to buy that shopping mall. Wait, 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 now, wait a minute. Wait, I don't have no shopping mall experience. <laughs> but notice, he can quicken your mind. Yeah. Over in jo- Job, Job chapter 32 and verse 8, he calls it a spirit of intelligence. It comes with the Holy Ghost. Say amen to this. So what happens? Over in Isaiah chapter 55, he says first, for my thoughts, come on, help me, are not your thoughts. See? And what are we saying with that? We're saying that none of us is sovereign. You're getting your thoughts from somewhere. That's why all leadership is spiritual. He, he, he talks about carnal people. He says over in, he talks about it in Romans, he said to be carnally minded is death. But I want you to see something over here. In 1 Corinthians and chapter 3 
and chapter three, and look at verse, glory to God, over seven. All right, chapter three. And let's look here at verse, its pages are sticking together. He, in verse one, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto what? Carnal. Even as unto babes in Christ. For I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal. For where there is among you what? Envying? Come on. It's strife? Come on. Division? What's another name for division? Racism. Racism. If you got racism in you, you're carnal. Carnal as a goat. And you can't bring forth spiritual things with carnality. Is this all right if we talk, if we talk like this? You can't bring it forth. See, don't look at me and think you might be another color than me so you got more sense than me. That, I can tell you right now, that ain't true. Yeah, I'm going to tell you that right now. So now don't even quibble with that. I mean, that's, you know, that's all. Okay, I shouldn't have said that, but that's all right. I put it on the book. No, no, you don't. You got to get up pretty early to beat me. Okay. Uh, where, is that? Where, where am I talking about? Well, anyway. In, in Amplified, it says you walk as mere men. So no longer. From now on, you're going to reject every notion that you're only human. Every notion. So look what he says, Isaiah, let's just finish that up. He says this in verse nine. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. Okay. So if I'm going to get a thought from God, I'm going to have to be ready because he's going to think what? Higher. Higher. He's going to think bigger. He's going to think beyond anything you think you have education to do and so forth and so on. Get ready. Get ready because most times those thoughts are rejected. And next thing you know, those gifts. One man said the wealthiest place in the earth is not, are not the oil fields of Kuwait or the diamond mines of South Africa. The wealthiest place in the earth is a graveyard because that's where all the gifts are buried. Look what he says here. He says, uh, where am I? Okay, here. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sore and what else? Bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me, what? Void, but it shall, what? Accomplish that which I please and it shall, what else? What else? Prosper in the thing whereunto I shall. it. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Say amen to that. So now I'm going to take up from here next time, but I'm going to, we're going to talk about acting like God. Say amen to that. So I said, no, no, no. We had time for a prison program. We started our program, but before we started it, I just got on the steps of the congregation of the stage. I said, Hey, we are turning jails into boarding schools. And things started happening. Just like in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, when the prophet said, The child shall be born in Bethlehem of Ephrata the ruler of nations. That prophet said it and died. But then, I mean, naturally. But then over in the New Testament, 
Here in the book of Luke chapter two, I guess Herod was taxing all the world. And the next thing you know, everybody had to come to their own hometown to pay their taxes. And guess what? Here is Mary with child. Here is Joseph with her and he had to go back to Bethlehem to pay taxes, but they got there and all the holiday inns, the embassy suites and all that was all taken up. So they had to go to a manger and she had that baby in Bethlehem. So God can control people in high places and make them say things they don't even know why they said it because he's orchestrating a plan. Say amen. Well, we are in a prophetic time right now. And this is a time for the glorious church that some things have been spoken. And God said, my people, Abraham, are going to be in bondage for 400 years. But at the end of 400 years, they're coming out. And when God said that, it was done. It's called a prophetic agenda. And I believe that's what we're under right now. Folks, you're about to see moves in the earth that you've never seen before. And I'm telling you, here was Pharaoh trying to hold them back. You can't hold back a prophetic agenda. You'll get hurt trying to hold back what God has already declared. And I'm saying, you are the people God has been waiting for. Don't think it's somebody else. It is you. He's about to use you to do exploits. He said in Isaiah 18, 8 and 18, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are made for signs and wonders. You get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. God's going to use you for miracles that this earth had never seen before. 